Errors in requesting, blood sampling, collection and administration of blood components leads to significant risk for patients. The serious hazards of transfusion scheme continually show that incorrect blood component transfused episodes are a frequently reported hazard. These are mainly due to human error which lead to misidentification of the patients. I'm Jane Addison, PBM practitioner for NHS Blood and Transplant and Shot. I'm here today with Dr Sue Robinson, consultant haematologist at Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust and Andrea Harris, professional nursing lead within NHS BT. Sue and Andrea are on the BSH guideline writing group for the administration of blood components, which has recently been reviewed and published in late 2017. Welcome Sue and Andrea. Thank you. So Andrea, can you tell me who else was involved with writing this guideline? Well, this British Society for Haematology guideline was written by a group of multidisciplinary and experienced and specialist practitioners from across the UK. So why do these guidelines need updating? All guidelines should be reviewed regularly to ensure that they're up-to-date and that they're evidence-based. It's really important that we review the literature and consider any new evidence, best practice and expert opinion to help improve patient safety. In addition to this, the serious hazard of transfusion informs us each year of transfusion safety incidents and this is a really important resource to help improve practice. And who are these guidelines for and why? Well, they're aimed at all healthcare organisations where transfusions take place to support all of the staff involved in the transfusion process in order for them to implement best practice. It's also important that we provide an aid for the development of organisational policies and procedures to improve patient safety. Sue, can you tell us about some of the key changes from the 2012 guideline? So the summary of the key action points in the transfusion process has been updated to provide more detail with regards to the bedside check, including details of ABO group compatibility. There is also a larger section with regards to decision making in the transfusion process with an emphasis on transfusion associated circulatory overload to determine which patients may be at risk of TACO and the importance of the TACO checklist. There is also a recommendation that the respiratory rate is now included with each set of transfusion observations. More recent evidence which informed JPAC led to changes in the 30 minute rule and there is a helpful appendix to consider any risk assessment and implementation of changes in the laboratory with regards to this. How will the guidelines then help hospitals to implement the recommendation from SHOT to use a bedside checklist which has also been endorsed by the Chief Medical and Nursing Officer? So the guidelines outline the detail of what's required in the bedside administration check that could be incorporated into a bedside checklist. So finally, Andrew, what do hospitals need to do next with these guidelines? Well, it's important that organisations do a gap analysis so that they can look and see what necessary changes they need to implement. And that they then, once those changes are embedded, that they uh, monitor that to ensure compliance and wherever possible that they publish any patient outcome data that will help to inform the evidence base for future guidelines. Lovely. Thank you, Andrew and Sue, for joining me today. If you'd like to read the full guideline, you can go to the BSH website. Uh, follow me. If you have any questions following uh, this short video, then please tweet them to at PBM underscore NHS.